So, uh, and again, the resolution that Mr. Young, Don Young, and I will be introducing uh, uh, cites the uh, chamber's uh, position that's on here. Um, we also, um, uh, Admiral Swift, um, have a citation of a comment that was made by Admiral Harris, who was your former colleague when you served at Pacific uh, Fleet Command, uh, and again, was President Trump's uh, ambassador to uh, South Korea, and obviously a very um, vigilant, um, forceful um, advocate for U.S. presence in the Indo-Pacific region. Uh, he stated when he testified before the, the U.S. Senate, and I, and I quote, uh, I think that by not signing on to UNCLOS, we lose credibility for the very same thing we're arguing for, which is the following, accepting rules and norms in the international arena. The United States is a beacon. We're a beacon on a hill, but I think that light is brighter if we sign in fully uh, to UNCLOS. So, uh, Admiral Swift, you, you made the comment about, you know, the, the benefits or advantages of being outside of UNCLOS in terms of trying to, uh, again, um, solidify uh, international rule of law in the maritime space um, versus being a full participant. And I was just wondering, you know, using um, Admiral Harris's comment in terms of, you know, his perspective as somebody who really has spent, like you, um, many years of, of great service for our country in the Indo-Pacific region, if you could sort of expand on that, um, uh, you know, sort of balance uh, and balancing act that um, our country needs to uh, determine in terms of whether becoming a full participant in UNCLOS. Uh, thank you for that uh, question, Chairman. Uh, well, I, the first thing I would say up front is that I do agree with, with my friend uh, uh, Harry Harris's assessment then, and, and while I can't speak for him, I suggest that his comments, uh, if anything, would be uh, uh, further increased in, in his uh, view that how important they are. Um, I, I just point out to the everything that both chairmen have said already and the ranking members have said about how the competition is going with China. And speaking frankly, it's not going well. And it's on that basis that I suggest now is an appropriate time to revisit the ratification. Um, I recognize the points that others make about the downside of ratification, but I, I think they've diminished, have been diminished even further with the result of uh, uh, the current competition. As you mentioned, there's 168 parties that have uh, signed on to uh, to the convention. Uh, being on the outside doesn't it, it isolates us uh, from our allies, partners, and friends. Whether you talk about Five Eye partners, you talking about the seven uh, countries that we have a defense pact with, and where it aligns us with are are uh, are those that are self isolated themselves, the likes of Iran, North Korea, and Venezuela. While those on the inside, Russia and China, as Ms. Glazier pointed out have free reign to define uh, the rules-based order within UNCLOS as they wish. And as you pointed, uh, we're excluded when it, uh, a, uh, an issue comes before the tribunal. I would underscore the fact that um, almost unrecognized is with re uh, response to the uh, South China Sea um, a case that was bought by the Philippines, not only did uh, China reject the finding of the tribunal, they rejected the tribunal itself as having no standing. So if the international courts have no standing, this falls right in line with how uh, uh, Rep. Shabbat has represented the approach that China has taken. Now is the time to step inside uh, the convention, I would suggest, uh, so that we're in more of a position of power to influence more fully this continued diminishment that's occurring in the international rules-based order. Great. Well, thank you, Admiral. And uh, I will now yield to uh, Mr. Whitman for uh, his questions. 